Hello, and welcome back to Gila's Tap House. And thank you for tuning in to Season 1, Episode 5 of The Average Joe Beer Connoisseur. And seriously, that is a huge thank you, especially if you sat through that disastrous Episode 4. That was poor. We're not going back to that. I now know how Eminem filled when he put out Relapse, but trust me, this will be my recovery, and we'll do a lot better this time around. So I've taken people's considerations into play here. So today I'm doing all one brewery and I'm doing all styles that are similar. People said they wanted to see styles that were the same compared and ranked. They wanted to see all from one brewery. So I took those ideas and I put them together. What I'm doing today is gonna to be 450 North. Um, this is also the second time I'm wearing this shirt. So big shout out to them for getting on here twice. And I wanted to do this brewery for a couple of reasons. One, I think they do a phenomenal job. Right now in the craft beer scene, they are killing it. People travel from all over the place. Two, they're in the middle of nowhere, Indiana, and people travel like crazy. Like the last release I went to, so I met someone from Tampa Bay. They drove from Tampa Bay just to get to these beers. And three, when they have these releases, they have so many people showing up and they do a phenomenal job at just keeping everybody entertained. For example, the last release, this place opens at 11 o'clock. At 6.15 in the morning, there was 133 people in line. That's insane. So they have adapted, they market themselves well, and now they offer breakfast for people that are there very early. And they set up these giant tables and people just show up and have this massive bottle share. So I think that's probably the coolest part about going. This massive bottle share. You just show up, you bring a couple beers, you get to try what other people bring from all over the country. Special release beers that you cannot find in your house. So it's super cool. So if you're ever in Indiana and you're looking to have a good time, I don't know why you'd be having a good time in Indiana. I don't really think there's much else there. But if you're having to be passing through, make sure it's a Friday, make sure it's a release, and make sure you get there early so you can sample some of these delicious beers. This place was also a winery first, so the wine is excellent, and they have some of the best pizza I've ever had. Now you can tell I'm quite the big guy, and it's some of the best pizza I've ever eaten. So I wanted to do that for them, give them a shout out, because they just do a phenomenal job. So today, we're going to tackle their sours, and we're gonna tackle a fresh fruit milkshake IPA. So we got all fruity beers to compare for you today. First up, we're going to do the Peach Ring Slushy XL. This is a fruited sour, and it's whopping in at about 8% alcohol, which is massive. Now this beer is brewed with 1,000 pounds of peaches. I don't know where they found peaches, or how they got 1,000 pounds of it at the time of year that they made this, but they did and I'm so happy they did that. So if you love peaches, you're gonna love this. This also has a 4.52 rating on Untapped. For those of you who are not on Untapped yet, that is massive. There's very few beers out there that have that or higher of a rating. So let's go ahead and try it here. Oh wow. So drinkability for 8%, that is incredibly smooth. It's extremely peachy. That is so smooth. It goes down so well. This goes down better than a porn star. Might have to cut that out. I know children watch this show sometimes. Taste for style. They say it's going to taste like a peach ring, and it tastes just like a peach ring. I'm going to do another taste here just to make sure. Yeah. So I haven't had peach rings in a while, but after I drank this beer, I had to try it and it tastes like a peach ring. So they say it's gonna taste like a peach ring. It does, taste for style, blows it out of the water. Will it get you drunk? Absolutely. This will easily get you drunk at 8%. The way it swallows, the mouthfeel, the taste of it, it's not an overpowering sour flavor, which makes it really nice. You can easily kick back next to a pool. You can cut grass and have one of these. Like this is a perfect summertime kind of drink and you can easily put down a ton of these. It doesn't fill you up, it's excellent. This will get you super drunk. Final overall rating, I'm going to go with a full pour. Haven't had one of those for a while, I don't think, and I have to give this one to them. It is so good. Now, if you like peach rings, there's another brewery out there called Bearded Iris, which is in Nashville, Tennessee, and they make a beer called Going in Circles. So I actually have a can here to show you. Now this is actually a sour double IPA. It's a farmhouse IPA, and this is, actually brewed with peach rings. So they put peach rings in it when they make the brew. So that makes it pretty phenomenal. And if you're gonna go down to Nashville, you have to go to Bearded Iris, you have to check them out, you have to check out Southern Grist. And if you're going down there, you need to party. 
because Nashville loves to party. Um, me and my buddies went down to Nashville and we were like, oh, you know how there's a Disney World Challenge drink around the world? We're like, we're gonna drink at all the bars. So if you've never been to Nashville, their bars are like three levels. There's a bottom level that has a band, there's a middle level that also has a band, and then there's like a top rooftop bar that also most of the time has like a band or a singer. So we consider each of those a different bar and we wanted to check out all these bars and we also found that each level might even offer different drinks or different beers. Now we are social people so we were like, let's just meet as many people as we can. And let me tell you what, Nashville knows how to get it done. So just quick, this is how our night ended. We ended up all getting separated. My buddy went home with some 50 year old woman to our hotel because he thought that was gonna be a fantastic idea. Turns out it wasn't. I ended up somehow four miles away from the hotel. Phone is dead. I stumble out of a bar and some guy's like, hey, oh man, you need a ride? I was like, I love one, yeah, but I don't have any money. I'm out of cash and my phone's dead. I was like, I can't help you. And he's like, I'll take you anyway. So this guy drives me four miles back to my hotel. Doesn't take cash, doesn't need anything. So. Not only is the party scene amazing, the people there are extremely friendly and it's a great place to get lost because you can't go wrong. I walk into my hotel room. My other buddy happened to make it back, thankfully, but there he was laying butt ass naked on the floor just letting his flag fly. So I'm getting ready for bed. Nashville has completely destroyed us and I'm trying to go to sleep and he's having a nightmare thinking I'm a bear. So he jumps up and just starts yelling, his dongs are swinging and I thought we were going to get kicked out, I really did. Now that I think about it, I really wish I had someone here signing this as I was doing because I want to know what the sign language is for dongs a swing is because that impromptu would be hilarious. So anyway, that's my story. If you're going to go to Nashville, you have to check out Bearded Iris, you have to check out Southern Grist, and you have to go down to Broadway and have a good time. I've been to Chicago on St. Patrick's Day, which is the number one place to go in the country. I've been to Cincinnati's Oktoberfest, which is the number two largest Oktoberfest in the world. So I go to some of the biggest party scenes out there just to see what they're about. In Nashville on a Monday after a Predators victory was insane. So check it out, they can hang with the best of them. Oh, and they have the number two largest New Year's Eve party. I'm a big Nashville fan, so I'm really selling it to you guys today. Anyway, people told me they needed to tell more stories because they enjoyed that, so that's for you. Getting back to the beer, we have the Blueberry Dessert Slushy. Now, this is probably the most sought after of the beers that I have here. People on trade pages really want to get after this. It is a fruited sour and it's clocking in at about 6% and it's brewed with brown sugar, blueberry, cinnamon, lactose, vanilla, graham cracker. It's supposed to taste like a blueberry pie when you drink it. And it has, let me see what it has here. It's got a 4.38 rating on untapped. So let me go ahead and try it here. I haven't had this since I got it, so let's see if it changed at all. Okay. So when I drink this, now that I've had it sit for a little bit, I get a lot more graham cracker in it than I did the first time. The first time I had it, it was overpowering of cinnamon. Not a terrible overpowering, not like when these anti-vaxxers were doing that cinnamon challenge, not like that, but it was just too much cinnamon for my liking. But now I get a lot more graham cracker in this. I'm still missing the blueberry a little bit. Drinkability though, it's very easy to drink. I could chug this whole can if I had to. Taste for style. I get the graham cracker, I get the sour a little bit, but it's it's more sweet than sour, and it's kind of like a sour patch kid that went a little bad. It's it's more sweet than it should. You know, taste for style, it's there. I can see why people highly saw, uh, try to find it, but I'm gonna tell you that it could be a little better for me. Will it get you drunk? It definitely can, but at six percent, it's gonna take you a while with the cinnamon flavor and the graham cracker. You're probably not gonna get there right away. You're probably gonna want to switch drinks. So final overall rating, uh, I said a lot of negative things about it. I didn't mean to, it's just because this beer is so hyped up. So I'm gonna give it a three quarters pour and I'll even take another drink just to show you that it's good. Yeah, so three quarter pour. Definitely solid beer, you definitely wanna check it out. So next, I'm gonna have the Caribbean Punch Slushy. And this is part of their Island Mixer series, they call it. And this is made with pineapple, oranges, and limes. Now out of the three slushies on Untapped, this has the lowest rating. This only has a 417 rating. So it's a little bit lower, but let's go ahead and try and tell for ourselves. So 
that's interesting. It's a little more sour than the first two, which I kind of like because that's what you're expecting. It's a fruited sour, it's 6%. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. The orange is a little strong, but the pineapple complements it very well. So drinkability, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it, it's really solid. I don't know if I'm going to chug these. I'm not going to pound them, um, but I can definitely sip on it for sure. Taste for style. I get the oranges. I get the pineapple. There might be a faint hit of lime at the end. So everything that they said is in it, is in it. Um, the lime really comes in, now that it's sitting here lingering in my mouth a little bit more, I'm getting more lime, which is kind of nice. It's very refreshing and I can actually taste it on my lips when I lick them. That's why I've done it a few times because it's pretty nice. Will it get you drunk? Yes, it will. Uh, that's pretty easy drinking. Like I said, it's a little sour, but if you're into sour things, then you're going to crush these because it's more sour than the first two. And it'll get you there. And it's their Island Mixer series, so it's supposed to be made off of like mixed drinks from a bar and stuff. So anyone that doesn't really isn't really into beer, they might want to check this one out. If I wouldn't have rated this, I could easily see Taylor picking this as a Taylor's recommendation of the week for people that don't really love craft beer yet and aren't really into it. Final rating. Um, let's give it a three-fourth pour. I'm really close to a full pour on it because it has all the flavors, it has everything I want, um, but to me it's just lacking just a little bit and I'm not really sure what it is. So three quarters pour. So lastly, I got the Fresh Fruit Strawberry Banana Milkshake IPA. Now, this is a milkshake IPA, so it's brewed with the strawberries, it's brewed, it's brewed with banana, and it's also brewed with lactose to give it more of a mouthfeel, kind of tastes milky. Uh, I'm not sold on milkshake IPAs. They're not a style of mine that I really go after and try to find, but this one is really good, so I wanted to check it in here for you guys. Um, now, the fresh fruit is not quite as popular on trade pages and other people that don't really know about 450. They don't look out, they don't look for the fresh fruited IPAs as much. However, if you go to the releases, this is the first beer to sell out. So I happened to be in line early enough. I got me quite a few of these. And as I was walking out, someone was like, hey, did you get the fresh fruit? I said, yeah. And I ended up trading away four packs for like eight to 10 different beers. So people love it there. They show up just to get this if they can get there early enough. So the fresh fruit's really good. Let's go ahead and check it out. So it's a little odd because you get the strawberry and you get the banana. So it tastes like a smoothie, but you also have that bitterness on the back end. It's, it's bittersweet, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to describe. It's kind of like you drink it and you're like, oh, strawberry banana, that's great. And then you get hit with like a hot bitterness, which is really nice. And it's got a nice thickness mouthfeel. Bittersweet is the best way to describe it. It's kind of like a stripper's last dance, you know. She finally did it. She's done stripping forever. She paid off her med school bills, but she's going to be very upset because she's leaving all her friends that she's made there and all her clientele. So it's kind of bittersweet, but I like it. Drinkability, it's easy to drink. Um, as I was saying with this one, you could easily drink some of these on a hot day, sitting out by the pool, kicking back because it tastes like a smoothie. Taste by style, it says it's got banana, it says it's got fruit, it's got lactose. You can tell all those things are in it and you can tell that it's got the bitterness in it as it should for an IPA. Will it get you drunk? Absolutely. I did not write down what the alcohol percent was, so let me check that out for you here real quick. 6.4%. So that's pretty heavy, 6.4%. Um, you know, it could be a lot more for an IPA, but it's still pretty good. Let me take taste again here, just to make sure I'm giving you a fair rating. Yeah. It will get you drunk. You sit back, sit by the pool, drink these. It tastes like a smoothie. It tastes like a. I'm not really sure what brand of smoothie it would be. Maybe like an orange Julius if they made a strawberry banana flavor. I'm not sure if they do or not. I've, I've only been there like twice. So, really good. Final overall rating, I think for the style and for the flavor, I'm going to give this a full pour actually. I'm a big fan of it and it's really tasty. So, that is 450 in a nutshell for you today. Now they come out with releases every couple weeks, so there's always new beers out there to try and find. And hopefully I can get more and do this for you guys again. And they definitely specialize in fruity stuff. Now, they make IPAs. Um, the IPAs that I might be able to review for you guys, because I have some, there's a Fruity Nuggets, it's a triple IPA, 
so good. Might be my favorite beer right now out there. I could just drink them all day long. They have a Taco Tuesday, which is a double uh, New England style IPA, and they have Fellowship of a Haze, which is a New England hazy IPA, which we can get into those more detail if I eventually do do those reviews for you guys. So they're very, very good. So we're gonna move on to Taylor's segment today. Taylor picked out a beer for me. I'm pretty excited to see what it was. Remember last week we did not have a Taylor segment. We had a high alcohol splurge kind of beer and we picked oil of Aphrodite. So bringing the segment back. She's never, I don't like the sign of a red solo cup. That makes me think that this is gonna be a Smirnoff again, punishing me for not using her last time. It is not. We have Saucony Creek Kutztown Golden Bear. Um, this is a 5% Pilsner from Saucony Creek, which is outside of Kutztown in Pennsylvania. And I think the reason she picked this is because summer's on its way here. And in the summertime, people prefer lighter, crisper beers, and that's where Pilsners really shine. So let me go ahead and drink it. It's very good. And I think I recall when we were there, we, were, we met the guys, the brewers, and they said that this was made to be chuggable. This was made to be crisp, light, refreshing, made to drink a lot of them. And as I'm re-drinking it now, because I haven't had one for a while, it's exactly that. You know, this is perfect for yard games. I could easily see myself as a college kid at Kutztown, standing on the lawn, playing yard games, chugging these beers, waving at the new freshman girls that were coming in. That would be the dream. So definitely enjoy this. Definitely, if you're in the Kutztown area, check out Saucony Creek, because they are excellent. And make sure you grab you some of these to have for the summertime. So that pretty much wraps it up today. We did one brewery, we did a lot of fruity stuff, and then even with Taylor's recommendation, if we think about it, this was all summertime drinking beer. So we had a lot of themes today. So if you like themes, this was your episode. So thank you again for checking me out. And I know this is a Wednesday and I normally post on Fridays. That's because I'm gonna be in Colorado this weekend. So make sure you follow me on Instagram. Make sure you follow me on Untapped so you can follow me and see everything that I'm out there drinking because Colorado's got a great craft beer scene right now. I'm gonna be on Fort Collins on Friday night. Uh, we're looking at hitting out about six different breweries and then we're gonna be going to Golden, Denver, and Colorado Springs for the rest of the weekend. So make sure you check it out. Make sure you add me, follow me, so you can get everything that is up to date. We do have 100 subscribers, I mean 100 followers on Instagram, that's great. We're at 70 subscribers, so I need a couple more. And remember guys, happiness is only a flight away. Till next time, cheers.